Hi, I'm Mike Clark. When I first started using Xcode, I remember feeling unproductive. Some of the features were foreign to me, but mostly I just missed all the shortcuts I used in my other editor. Since then, I've learned a bunch of shortcuts and pro tips to work faster in Xcode. These screencasts distill all those time-saving tricks down into a concise, visual format so you can quickly become more productive in Xcode. If you're a new iPhone or Mac developer seeing Xcode for the first time or wish you were more familiar with the shortcuts, these screencasts are for you. What follows is a few samples from the first two episodes to give you an idea of some of the things you'll learn. I hope to see you there. Enjoy! Xcode can be a little intimidating at first, but don't let it throw you. It's actually quite easy to use once you know your way around. So before we get into any of the shortcuts, let's just spend a quick minute looking through all the major areas of the default layout we see here. Over on the left hand side here, we see the groups and the files pane. And this just gives us an outline view of all the stuff inside of our project. And it lets us organize our project file into what it calls groups. So I created this project from an iPhone template. If we know the name of the file that we're looking for, another great way to navigate to files is using open quickly and that's shift command D. So shift command D there, and then we just start typing the name of the file. So if I wanna to go to movies, app delegate, it just pre-fills that way. I can navigate through these, or I can continue typing to let it pre-fill them. And then when I find the file I want, I just hit return, and it takes me to that file. Back in our movies view controller.h, we can go right to the implementation file using option command up arrow. So that's movies view controller.m. We can go back to the header file by using option command up arrow again. And I use that one all the time to make changes between header files and their corresponding implementation files. And it's decided, yeah, I can go ahead and do that extract method refactoring for you. I'm going to call the new method extract method by default, and we'll just go ahead and change this to make cell. And it's figured out that it needs to take one parameter, the table view, and it returns a UI table view cell. So we just hit preview, and it'll give us a diff of the changes that it's going to make. Similar to the pop-ups we saw in the text editor pane, there's also a pop-up in the documentation to show all the class methods and tasks and instance methods associated with NSArray. We can navigate to any of those, and it shows us the documentation for that method. So let's say we're iterating through all the elements of an array. The completion prefix for that is 4e, expand the text macro with control dot, and now we have three placeholders. We can go to the next placeholder with control slash, or the previous placeholder with shift control slash. The only thing different here is our text string has some literal text for at property, and then the two placeholders we saw, type and variable, our completion prefix is prop, and then we use the include context to scope this to interface files only. And that's all we need. Then over in our custom view class, we can just remove these two lines. We're going to use the text macros instead. Our completion prefix is prop. We hit control dot to complete that sequence. That takes us to the first placeholder. We type in UI image. Hit tab, that will complete that. We go to the next placeholder with control slash, and we'll type in our variable name, image there. And that raises a good question. When would I use these user scripts instead of just using text macros? Because up until this point, we're basically doing the same thing here. We're just outputting some text. But user scripts are good for more than just outputting text. We can run any command line tools here or external tools or use any scripting support built into any of the scripting languages we want. In this case, we're in a shell script. So how about we just have the computer speak the PBX selected text using the say command line option? When we use shift command in, it brings up the new project wizard and we see all the built-in templates for Coco, command line utilities, a bunch of other ones down here, and then iPhone at the top. Now this navigation-based application template is great for starting a navigation-based table view application. If you use that template and use build and go, you'll get a table view, but it won't have any data inside of it. So let's say we wanna customize this template and instead of having a blank table when we run the application, we want to pre-fill it with some data. Maybe we want to use that for presentations or just to add a little bit more code to put us on our way. One final step we can add to our build process is running a static analysis tool. The LLVM Clang Static Analyzer is a great one for iPhone and Mac applications. 
I highly recommend using the Clang Static Analyzer for all your apps, Mac and iPhone. It's easy to hook into your build process, and it detects some common problems automatically for you. It's already caught a few that would have bit me down the road.